Okay, so I just came off of a very interesting, very interesting water fast that God led me to because I had to purge my spirit from energies and entities when I came out of the tarot world and also stepping into my calling and being all that God has called me to be. So in this place, God has revealed a lot of things to me and one of the things that he really revealed to me was how there's a lot of lukewarm people I would say Christianity but we can't just single out the Christians there's others who claim that they love God and you know they go to church and they tote their bibles and they're singing his praises and singing songs and invite people to church they're doing all the things that you would think that they're supposed to do to usher people into the kingdom however this is deep because god has revealed to me that these are the ones who are lukewarm the bible says i neither that you are neither hot nor cold because if you are lukewarm i will spew you out of my mouth and God says that there are a lot of lukewarm people in the church. They're dressed up. You know, it's like Halloween costumes. Everybody got the costume on, dressed up but messed up. They can quote the word of God all day. They will sing songs of praises to God all day. They will claim how much in their family that their family bloodline and their history and their father was a pastor, their mother was a pastor, their grandma was a deacon. That's all their titles. But no one can stand on their own autonomy, their own birthright, their own prayer life. I've literally gotten to the point to where I'm just so tapped out of the earthly realm. Y'all can call me crazy. Whatever you want to do, they already did all that to me anyway. Especially those of you agents who are following me. Shout out to all y'all. You still have a chance to give your life to God. And because of you, I post the sinner's prayer in the description box section so therefore you will always have an opportunity to not only spy on me but to report back to your bosses that i gave you a chance to give your life to god so it's interesting because this reminds me of a time where i was very high off of drugs and i remember i went to altar call at church and when i went to altar call at church um shoot I was so broken I went to go lift my hands up to raise my hands to you know in a surrender mode and the lady that I was standing before she's like you know raise your hand up and I went to go raise my hands up but I raised them up halfway and she said raise your hand all the way up in the air and I went to go raise them a little bit more she says all the way up in the air and I went to go raise them a little bit more and she took my hands and she pushed me backwards and she told me she said girl go on get out of here she said you ain't trying to praise God and I put my hands down and I ain't even finished the sinner's prayer. I just walked away from the altar like, damn, I guess, you know, I ain't going to be going to heaven because <laughs> I just got rebuked from an altar call, you know. So it was deep, too, because um, growing up, we were very sheltered and I was never taught about drugs. I was never shown anything about drugs, nor what drugs was. So when my so-called friends introduced me to drugs they just said here take it and I was like oh, what is it they'll just take it you'll be fine and I did and from there I got addicted and when I went to my family my personal blood family to help me with it they talked about me like a dog they spread my name and dragged me through the dirt like a dog I had no friends to talk to I had no family to talk to so I ran to the church and when I ran to the church God is all I knew who to run to but when I went to the altar call, I didn't realize that the altars are surrounded by witches that are blocking God's true remnant from getting to him. So it was that day to where I was rebuked from the altar call. So what I did was I didn't go back to church anymore. I didn't go back to church for a while. But from there, I remember if anyone knows Bishop Noel Jones, I was going to Bishop Noel Jones Church. It, that wasn't the church that I was rebuked from. That was... Pastor Ron's Gibson's church in Riverside, the Church of God of Christ in Riverside, California. 
I didn't go to church for a while, but I ended up going to church in LA, which was Bishop Noel Jones Church. But on my way to church, actually on my way to the strip club, because at this time I was a stripper. And on my way to the strip club, I would stop at the church on my way to work. And I just want to just have a point of contact with God. And I remember I would get there like, cause he had noon service. So I would get there long enough time, you know, right before noon service let out. And I was looking for like a usher or a deacon or anyone just to, you know, come out of that church, come out of the doors because when they let the church out, everyone's just gone out the door, you know? So what I did was I sat myself down under a counter, under the booth in the corner on the floor. And I just sat there in kind of like a ball position. And I just wanted anybody to talk to me, just anybody to say, hey, come to this altar. You know, God got you. God will save you. But nobody came. Everybody just passed me up and they just looked at me all strange and weird. God reminded me of that vision. And he told me that these are also the lukewarm Christians, those who come for, you know, a word for them they come to eat for them for their own gratification but they're not really about you know winning souls or empire building for the kingdom so I realized that I was going to sit under that table and no one was coming towards me so I jumped up from that table and I went on to work when I went to work as a stripper I just knew that I can literally you know catch anyone's attention that. I want it because, you know, I'll, I'm me. So there's this one guy who used to come into the strip club all the time. And now, mind you, I always stopped at church on the way to the strip club because it wasn't about what man was saying to me or did to me. Man already rebuked me and rejected me at this point. But my point of contact was God. So I didn't care how high I was. I didn't care if I was stripping. I don't care how drunk I was. I still went to God and I still said, God, forgive me. God, I, I don't know how to get off of this. I don't know how to, you know, get off of this alcohol, this drugs, or, you know, how not to do what I'm doing. I, even with the stripping, I'm addicted to the money. You know, it's like eight grand a weekend, you know, and I'm the only girl that's like killing it, you know, that I know of. I'm pretty sure they were killing it in other ways, but I only took the stage. Or I didn't even have to take the stage. I just walked around the club and counseled people. But there was this one guy that I was walking around. And I always try to get his attention. And he would always ignore me. And I would go up to him and talk to him and say, hey, you want to lap dance? And this guy, he just, he would look at me. Then he would look down. And he never, ever spoke to me. And I was so determined for that one guy to speak to me. It became my goal. So. Literally, one day someone told me, they said, that's a pastor. And I said, oh, that's a pastor. Oh, I know I'll definitely be able to reach him or talk to him. So I continue to try to not try to go seduce the pastor, y'all. So whoever thinking like that, don't think that I want to go say, hey, maybe there's something I can say or talk to him or something. Just talk to me. I just want to, you know, I was, I don't know, I was kind of vain or egotistical in my own way. Like, you know, no, he'll talk to me, you know, but this guy would never Ever. I mean, he wouldn't even look up at me. He would never speak to me. So finally, one day I looked up. When I came from church, I went to the club. I noticed this guy. He didn't show up for a while. So I asked about him and asked what happened. And they were like, you don't know what happened? And I was like, they were like, you mean that guy that was real tall? He was like a light skin. He was like football player built, you know, things like that. And they were like, that guy? And I said, yeah. And they said, oh, you didn't hear about him? I said, no. They said, girl, he's in jail for murder. I said, what do you mean he's in jail for murder? They said, all of the dancers that were coming up out of here missing. What this guy was doing, he was the only guy and the first guy ever known in Los Angeles, in the state of California, to ever be convicted of murdering that many bodies without the actual bodies presence of the evidence of the bodies so this guy was a serial killer and being that he was a serial killer the fact that he would never talk to me one shows me of my protection from God and God's grace and 
how even in spite of me not being able to talk to family, me having no friends and friends judging me and even the church members turning their back on me, I still, still in spite of ran towards God. And even in the face of death, even in the midst of death, God preserved me. He saved my life from a serial killer. Now that's just the first time he saved my life. I'll share other stories with you all about the times that I faced death, the times I was even dying and, and God had mercy on me. But this guy, being that he was a serial killer, being that I would stop at church in spite of every day on the way to the strip club, no matter what anyone said, and still kept that relationship with God, saved my life. I'm to a point now to where I don't even, I don't even want no friends. I don't even want to, I don't even, I don't even, I don't trust nobody, first of all, because to, to my recollect, everybody got the shot. So everybody got them hydros going inside of them and everybody's acting like it. And it's very obvious. So I don't, I don't, I don't trust nobody. I don't know who to trust. So what God was revealing to me is that God has heard the conversations of the Christians who claim that they love God. Those who claim that they love God's people. God has an entire new remnant that's here. Those who have been prostitutes, drug addicts, porn stars, strippers, crackheads, you name it. They've been the worst of the worst, the bottom of the bottomest. They've been dragged. This is not the popular crowd at all. But God has also shown me where the people who were the most popular, the people who were the churchgoers, the ones who were feeling as if their family was more royal and their family was better than you, those who were too holier than thou, all those are the ones who ran to go get the shot. God also showed me that they been made the governor their God. They been made the doctors their God. Because God said from the gate, they were running to those doctors, eating all kind of ham hocks and, and, and pork chops and, and, and soul food sundaes. Like grandma's passed down re recipes. And that's what the doctor asks you, you know, what diseases run in your family? Because everybody passing down the same exact recipe. So everybody's dying to the same exact thing. So here it is, all of the old guard, the old church, old Christian, you can't even tell them that you were a stripper, you were a dancer because they look down on you. You can feel it in their spirit. I don't know how many people put me on the phones with their friends and they're like, you know, how you doing? I was like all excited, like, oh, we serve the same God. I'm excited. You know, God delivered me from drugs. I used to be a stripper and I can feel it, the vexation in their spirit. And God allowed me to hear the conversations on the, on the phone that not only the people that I was talking to that were pretending as if they were concerned about my whereabouts. But God showed me truly that not only were they not my friends, but they were taking my information that I was sharing with them and they were going back to their people and they were talking cash, mad trash about me. God not only heard those conversations, but he allowed me to hear those conversations. God allowed me to see straight through their spirit. God allowed me to know who is for me and who is against me. God said that in this hour, we are going to truly see who is truly about serving him, who is talking about it, and who's truly about it. Now, everyone was looking for the outside world, people of other cultures and races and creeds and religions to come against God's elect. But God has showed me that it's going to be the very church. It's going to be the very people who claim that they love God. Those who were in church, those who were patting the tamarines, those who were all dressed up Sunday's best but messed up, those who depended on the pastors, those who ran down to the doctors, those are going to be the ones who turn on God. God said every single person who kept running down to the doctor, they got all kind of medical conditions. They keep going to the doctor for this, going to the doctor for that. Every They at the doctor every three days. Because, like, oh, I got a toothache. Let me go to the doctor. Oh, my toe hurt. Let me go to the doctor. Oh, my eye hurt. Let me go to the doctor. Oh, my hair. It turned gray this week. Let me go to the doctor. God said that they already made those doctors their God. Because when they start having those medical problems, they didn't call on him. They ran to the doctor to get they fixed. They ran to their doctors, their gods, to get their medication. And then they want to come to me and say, well, I have cancer now. Well, what may God's will be done? Well, God's going to fix it. Or, or I have thyroid disease. Or, 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 or I, they have to pull out my entire uterus. God said that the reason 
that that is happening, not because he allowed it to happen, but because they allowed it to happen. And then other people want to blame God for other people's idiosyncrasies. So here it is right now where God is warning us chosen one, his remnant, to beware of those who claim to love God, those who claim to serve God, those who have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Perfect example. If you say, oh, God told me to move this person in with me. They'd be like, well, I don't know. You should still do a background check. Or if you say, well, God told me to move to this area. They'd be like, I don't know. You still go check it out and still go find out. People like that. That's what I'm talking about. Those are going to be people who turn on you. Those are going to be people who turn you in. God said specifically that those are the Judases that will be the ones to turn against God's people in this hour because they're going to be so jealous of the anointing that God has on his true remnant's life. And they're going to be like, well, why not me? I've been serving God for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. I've been in this and they just some babes. Like, you know, they they just saw some milk. God said, that's not so. God said that my people, these are my true people, that you will know them by their fruit. He says, these are, these are not the sheeple. They sought my face first before they ran to any government official, before they ran to any doctor official to try to heal them or lay hands on them. They came to me first. They didn't wait until they were well into the problem and then say, hey, oh, God's going to fix it. And they get mad at God when they don't see any results and say, no, I've been doing this for years. And, you know, I, I can tell you now, you, you know, it ain't, it ain't going to happen. God says that he has put scales over their eyes, that they will believe the strong delusions that are around them right now is deep because they are literally in a space to where they don't even see it. And you have to be very, very careful because these ones are very dangerous. They're agents. They're not around you to be your friend and be very mindful. They will keep God show me a door where they're keeping one foot in the door. Like you try to close the door of your life to them. They will take their foot. I see vans like tennis shoe vans. They will keep their foot in the door to keep you from closing the door because they know that you are the best thing that happened to them. They know that the light of God is upon you. And many of them are not around you because they're truly your friends. They're just around you to be nosy so they can ride your coattail. So therefore they can say, hey, if it wasn't for me or I've been there for you or you owe me something, God said they're not around you for the right reason. These are the Judases in the camp. Now mock my word. These are going to be the ones who are going to turn on God's people. They're going to turn on God's elect in this hour. These are the ones that will bow down to Baal's temple. These are the ones who have already bowed down. These are the ones who already, not only if it was so easy for them to, to run down, to go get all the mass injections because they're afraid of dying. What are they afraid of dying for? If, if the body says, the Bible says to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. What are they afraid of death for? Well, what's the deal of the mask so much? If everyone is eating right, if they're eating healthy, if they're praying every day, if they're saying their grace. But I guess the truth comes out, huh? Yeah. The truth is really about to come out now because there is true war within the church. And what's even deeper about it is that the spirit of Jezebel is not only at work, but it's at work with the old guard in God's church. And that spirit is a spirit of deception. It's a spirit of the antichrist. And that spirit is gonna try to be used against God's people, but God's people has already been warned and we see it, we see straight through it. And I'm telling y'all right now, if y'all know anybody that's lukewarm, I would literally, I get away from them. I would cut them off. Anybody that's questioning you, that's saying, uh, you know, that's, that feels as if, you know, you're, 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 you, you would do anything to compromise your faith with God. These are not your friends. Those who question every move that you make, but yet they have no life themselves. They have nothing going on themselves, but they want to know every single thing about you. What you doing? What you up to? Watch them. Watch them, folks. Because they're not asking because they're concerned about you. They're asking because you're a living mockery of what it is and who it is that they wish that they could be. They see the hand and the anointing of God in your life. And trust me when I say, they are very jealous. But at this point, I would say when it comes to God's remnant and his old guard church, be afraid. Be very afraid. Because God's true remnant are here and on the scenes unapologetically. And we will not be moved. And there is no government official. There is no 
mandate that will make us shut down our belief, that will stop us from praising God, that will stop us believing in God, that will make us do anything that is against our Father's will. Not only do we have a form of godliness, but we walk in the power thereof. It's not opposite for us. I stand on this knowing. And for all of you out there who stand with me in this, I salute you.